how do you play on clay court? In this video, I'm gonna show you how to play on dirt if you haven't grown up on it. What are the tactical decisions that you have to make and how, most importantly, are you keeping your footing? The biggest difference, of course, is how you move on clay. When you first start to play on clay, you've never played on clay before, you feel like you're sliding, slipping, doing whatever. In German, we say, you're like a cow trying to figure skate. So just imagine that. When do you slide? Well, when you're in clay court, a lot of people just go on sliding all the time because, oh, it's clay court and I have to slide. To my mind, you actually only slide when you need to slide, which is when you have to move further distances. If the ball's coming straight at you, don't slide. Why make yourself unstable more so than you have to? So ideally, you're sliding into the shot. So as you're striking the ball, you have almost stopped. Of course, you're going to move a little bit, but that allows you to hit the ball stable and on balance. There will be times when you actually hit the ball and then continue to slide. For instance, when you're running down a drop shot. But at that point, you have to know that you're in a very passive position and you have to make good tactical decisions to come back into the court, stay in the point, because when you're still sliding, you'll have to find your balance and then recover. The main thing that you want to maintain when you're playing on clay is a super wide and low base because you want your center of gravity lower. If you're upright, which is no good on any surface, you tend to tip over, which in the best case scenario is you're just losing control over the shot. Worst case scenario is this. As with any drills that you're doing, you're starting from slower and simpler to more complex and faster. Actually, I'm not gonna do that anymore, I'm too old. But Leo is gonna do it for us. All right, so Leo's just trying to find his gauge here. Just sliding forward, body weight on his front foot. And of course, he's alternating the legs. Now, how do I stop and not overrun a ball? To my mind, you wanna use your front foot or your outside foot as kind of a break. So work with your outside foot when you're moving sideways, which would be, if I'm moving to my right, my right foot, if I'm moving to my left, my left foot, unless I'm hitting a close stance backhand, of course, or when you're moving forward, whichever foot you prefer, that is your break. And there's a really cool drill, which again, I'm not gonna do but Leo will. All right, six balls. If you hit me, I'll hit you. <laughs> All right, ready? Here we go. All right. Oh, get to the ball. Up, up, up. Come, 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 come. Yep, slide before. All right, slide into the ball. That's better. Five. Good, one more, one more, six. There we go. Usually clay courts play much slower. What that means is you're playing much longer points. You're playing much longer matches. So you have to prepare physically for that. So let's work on shot resilience. And there's a wonderful drill. Actually, I didn't think it was so wonderful when I had to do it, but for a coach, it's great. So I'm gonna feed 10 balls, right, left, right, left. Leo is going cross court, lowest part of the net, deeper part of the court. Give him 20 seconds rest. Then we go to 11 balls, 20 seconds rest, 12 balls, so on and so forth until we get up to 20, and then we're coming back down to 10. Let's see how he does. All right, here we go. Cross court. Good height over the net. There we go, that's it. So at some point, this drill really also becomes a mental skills drill because you're getting tired. Here we go. One more. I think that's 10. Okay, good. 20 seconds rest. Yeah, math was never my strong suit. I'm just guessing. Because the court is a little slower, you can't really penetrate through the court as much. You're not hurting your opponent with the speed of the court. Now, of course, you can take the ball sooner, but another great way to hurt your opponent is to open angles. Just going, uh-oh, for our opponents. Oh, partner's cone here. 
you're really trying to generate spin. Really rolling the ball. That's a good ball. So the next drill, again, is not going for pace. What we're both trying to do is have the ball bounce in the court, but then cut the single sideline before it passes the baseline because I really want to push my opponent out of the court. That's it. Okay, we're done. That's a good ball. That's another good ball. I don't even have to do that any longer to show you how the drill is done. That was an exceptional shot. The bounce usually is a lot higher on clay, so just think of Rafa's forehand. His forehand is not really faster, but it has a lot more rotations on the ball, and it bounces a lot higher, which poses a problem for your opponent if you can hit really heavy, because either they have to move up, take the ball on the rise, or you back them up about a mile behind the court, which again, opens the court, and that's where your angles then come back in. The next drill works on height. So you can put a target here, and by target, he has to clear that target. So we could, for instance, also put a bench there. Uh, sometimes I'm asking the parents to be the target that the kids have to play over. Just kidding, you don't want to do that. Leo's goal is to hit the ball over the basket so that he gets good net clearance. All right, here we go. That's a good ball. And I got to be a little deeper, heavier. Keep accelerating. That's a boy. Yep. That's better. Also, a little bit of a clay court warning. You will have bad bounces. There is no way around it. So know that it's going to happen. Be okay with it because you know what? Your opponent is going to have just as many. We oftentimes say clay court tennis is like chess on the tennis court. So if you want to get more tips on how to play smart tennis, watch this video.